So good afternoon. So this is the last presentation in a series. As we have been learning from other presentations, the engagement of actors in the application of the quantitative storytelling around the nexus has been a beamer throughout the project. To make it clear, magic is not another number crunching project. The magic and strength of the project resides on the effort to spell out the narratives behind the numbers through engagement with different actors. I'm going to first give an idea of the engagements carried out. Then I will make a reflection about the meanings of extended peer community uh, within MAGIC and finally share some ideas that emerged from the project implementation as well as a posteriori uh, reflection and considerations. We started this project with a great ambition in terms of engaging policymakers in the whole process of examinations of Nexus policy narratives. Because we were looking at Nexus related EU policies and because one of the services of the Commission was part of the project, we thought that engaging with different services of the Commission would be greatly facilitated. It turned out that this wasn't straightforward for many reasons that I will discuss during the presentation. The first part of my presentation is based on a survey that we conducted with the MAGIC team a few months ago about the engagement exercises. So in this slide, you have uh, two graphs. Um, and they sort of represent on one side the rich aspirations we had and then the richness of actual engagements. We asked two questions to the research teams. What did you want to do? And what did you end up doing? In the left figure, we have the type of actors sought to be engaged in our processes of examination of narratives and those that were finally engaged. If you look at the two graphs, you may conclude that not only did most magic teams succeed in their ambition, but also engagements opportunities were richer than envisaged. However, this is not so easy. Not all actors were engaged in the expected processes, neither these processes actually deliver the expected, nor they were engaged at the desired stages and the imagined formats. Indeed, the increase in the diversity that you see on the right graph indicates the large degree of adaptation to the challenges we faced along these four years to pursue our ambition. Deliver a methodology that works by ensuring that relevant actors are part of the process. So, as I said, major challenges were found when interacting for example, with um, civil service servants at the European Commission, but also uh, members of the European Parliament. And so in order for us to maintain the commitment of the project, mo most MAGIC teams chose to deal with the lack of interest, of responsiveness and an availability of civil servants with targeting specific national organizations and institutions or to a greater extent actually to uh, engage with academic institutions and civil society organizations. In fact, we can say that overall technical and scientific expert knowledge outside the consortium were the most engaged types of knowledge across all case studies. So at the European level, uh, for example, not all innovation case studies succeeded in evolving the European Commission and Parliament in a continued form. On the other hand, in several European uh, agencies like the European Environmental Agency, Transport, Energy and STOA, there was quite a great deal of interest and the contribution and quality of these engagements were quite rewarding. In particular, the collaboration with EA was quite salient. It's not by chance that uh, we have Lorenzo Benini in this session. The Environmental uh, European Agency 
uh, participated in several engagement activities, supported the organization of engagement events, and invited magic researchers to apply their methods in new projects. At the national level, difficulties in engaging actors from ministries in member states were somehow compensated with the involvement of national agencies and regional authorities. In many cases, um, we, we engage civil society organizations, unions, local cooperatives, um, and, and environmental NGOs. For example, uh, it is interesting uh, also that in some cases, like on um, the case of the, um, the, the common agriculture policy, uh, farmers were engaged, and this is, was not originally planned. So there have been a great deal of engagement in this project throughout the four years. Um, I'm not going to give a, a number, but there are many on the um, dimension of, of the hundred. Now in this uh, slide, um, we, you can see that on the right side that these actors were engaged through mirror methodologies. And this particular photo on, on the left side is from a World Cafe event that was uh, organized uh, within the European Regions Week about electric and connected and automated vehicles. 90 people attended this, this event and they were all from different NGOs and, and uh, different authorities in different member states. This is exemplary of something very important. The engagement should occur where people go, and this is a winning strategy. Uh, also here, it should be noted that we had the ambition of convivial and deliberative methods where different actors would come together and review, interact and propose alternative narratives and futures. It turned out that in many cases, everybody was too busy uh, to meet with others. Uh, with cancellations, for example, at the last minute, um, with uh, interesting justifications, but a lot uh, so a lot of the engagements that we actually did was through in-depth interviews. And this was equally very rich. A desirable quality of engagement activities is continuity, and this has not been possible in most of the cases, not all. Now, I'd like now to start somehow problematizing the idea of uh, extended peer, peer communities uh, in the context of, of, of magic. But I have to do this in combination with the context uh, of the uh, co uncomfortable knowledge. Steve Rayner's concept of uncomfortable knowledge adopted by the project to describe what we have been up to uh, also has to uh, be complemented with the ensuing uncomfortable encounters uh, and, and actually the, what we sensed as the non-readiness to be heard in the spheres we were trying to engage with, especially policymaking institutions. And then what, um, what is uh, interesting in this uh, particular uh, problem is what Rainer describes as the four strategies to cope with this type of knowledge in institutions. Denial, dismissal, diversion and displacement. Now let's uh, start from the uh, extended peer uh, communities. Uh, Saint Anthony of Lisbon is said to have accomplished a miracle when in the face of a situation where nobody wanted to listen to his verbal, he turned to the river and fishes came out to listen to him. And this is called the miracle of the fishes. I have used this metaphor in magic to inquire who were those fishes? 
So once we had our findings and our narratives examined and critiqued, critiqued, and in other words, we had all this uncomfortable knowledge about the policies we were uh, examining, with which fish would we be talking to? With whom should we entertain a co-creative conversation to reimagine less dysfunction futures and at least ensure coherence of policy making around this nexus? Um, now, let's look at the uh, definition of extended peer community as proposed by uh, Silvio Funtovic and, and Jerry Rivetsi in the 90s. So they say that in, for these new problems, which are problems that were addressed by uh, magic, the quality of the process depends on open dialogue between all those affected. And these are not people, not necessarily people with institutional accreditation, but all those that have a desire to participate in the resolution of um, the issue. First, the first thing that I want to say is that there is an assumption that there is a community out there waiting to be called uh, to dialogue with open arms. And perhaps there is, but you need a lot of magic to, uh, to engage uh, with that community. And I will return to this a bit later. So to me, somehow, um, then what do we, in most cases in magic, uh, we, had actually, we have actually engaged, not with those affected, but those affecting. These little clouds that you see on the left are inspired by a, pro a project uh, on the innovation alternative water sources, where uh, basically we found uh, that those that were most affecting definitely uh, the process were actually not being engaged. Who is telling the agriculture, the farmers in, in the islands, in the Canary Islands, that they should produce avocados, uh, tomatoes, and stop producing bananas probably are not even the ones that we have engaged with because they are not uh, uh, reached out. So to me, what the extended peer community is, is somehow an open question. Now, I've been a little bit with, sorry for the, what could be um, light, uh, heartedness to look at this, but it is not. Uh, we, about uh, who did we meet and who did we engage with? Since we are talking about uncomfortable knowledge, it is tempting to think about Rainer's institutional strategies to cope with the discomfort, as I enumerated before, the denial, dismissal, diversion, and displacement. But I instead here propose a very simplistic mapping of sort of arch archetypes of actors' positions and positioning within those coping strategies. And we have the gatekeepers, also, we, I mean, the maintainers of a narrative. And here we can distinguish between the believers uh, and the nurturers, but also those that just have a job to do uh, which does not mean that they don't see the problems with the policy narratives we were examining. Then there are also uh, a lot of disempowered fishes, uh, which are mm, many, you know, civil servants, uh, CSOs, and, and, other and, other, and other people, which are well-intentioned, and that probably have not been in institutions for a long, a long time. Um, and actually try to bring in new ideas and even dare to challenge uh, the status quo. Uh, I would say that this, um, actually, if there is persistence on their acting, uh, they actually in the long term can nurture some institutional transformation. 
Then there are the sharks. And the sharks could, can be uh, those that try to use the knowledge to opportunistically uh, justify or advance other agendas that use the uh, knowledge that is produced in this project to advance their own, their own agendas. And they not necessarily uh, are, um, correspond with magic values and, and ethos. Then there are also Doris. They listen and they move on with their ordinary jobs and somehow are forced to forget that they know better. And what I want to make it clear that we didn't never met any archetype as such, uh, because we are all a mix of these categories, depending on what we are doing, depending on the context, including also the relational. It happened to us that in the same, for instance, in-depth interview about the water energy food policy narratives, we could discover different aspects of Rainer strategies and the interviews positioning on them. But in terms of engagement strategy, uh, the magic um, engagement strategies, this is actually quite rewarding because for us, it meant that we were able to create safe spaces where those that engaged in our project found the comfort to deal with the uncomfortable. And this is quite a, a very important result of this project. Now, um, I think it's too, too soon, as this project is nearly in the end, is talking about the impact and pervasiveness of magic knowledge is really premature. If we take the example of citizen engagement, it took more than 20 years until we finally have an institutional program in the commission that wants to force foster engagement with citizens. Uh, with citizens. However, uh, we have detected some errors in this project that ought to be corrected in future projects. For example, financing a science for policy project that has no pre-agreed connection to the policymaking processes is um, a big ambition in the sense that the experiment is diverted to find the terms of others to get attention instead of experimenting on how to co-create shared spaces of deliberation in everybody's terms. With an exception of a case where the impact was visible, one can resume the uptake of results or even their consideration with a quote of one of the magic researchers. Most of them, policymakers, were polite. Mm, and maybe not true. It would be great to see the results of the project in the website. Um, the exceptional case I was referring to, um, the work of engagement was situated in the political context. It was connected to ongoing processes and where there was familiarity as well. This is very important. In the sense, all were local, including the researchers themselves. So the connection was very, very important. And this is another very important outcome of this project. So this is my last slide and I would like to give some ideas of what I think needs to, uh, to somehow change. The first, uh, the first thing is to talk about own terms. Own terms is um, when we started this project, we, we thought that we as researchers could impose a preconceived standard of mean making and structure into, onto others. And this is not, um, this is not uh, a, a viable um, solution for engagement. 
So we need to, um, to create spaces of engagement that deal with everybody's terms. So for example, no lecturing, we need to create partnerships. Then it's about the, the, sp the spaces where these engagements take place. I've talked about safe spaces. And, um, and these are, again, cannot be decided by the researchers, cannot be created from, um, with an ideal that the researchers have in mind how this should look like. It is okay to experiment, but the first experiment should be to go where the people we want to get engaged with are. This is valid for citizen engagement and this is valid for multi-actors uh, engaged engagement. Um, it is interesting that the COVID-19 situation allowed us to experiment more with online engagement than, than uh, we, we thought it could happen. Um, but this only happened, happened in, the recent, um, in the recent months. Then the issue of uh, the extended peer community and the, the issue that I raised before about the, the assumption that there is an, an ex extended peer community out there uh, awaited to be engaged. I think we, uh, we saw in this project that serendipity and momentum helped with uh, some engagements. But I also think that we should uh, engage with the emergent and the latent in the sense that we have tried to engage the obvious influencers um, to the magic process um, in, in the parlance of extended the peer community. This is people affected or being uh, affecting or being affected because we assume that we had something uncomfortable to say and that uh, that needs to be known, which I still believe is true. We need to talk to uh, these people. However, I would argue that the effort needs to go into embracing engaging with latency and activism. The idea that the influence is volatile and emergent at the same time. So awaiting for the extended peer community needs to convive with these two things, latency and activism. There, are, uh, there is a lot of, of people making meanings and doing their own thing out there to solve collective matters of concern. This happens, for example, in the form of collective action in initiatives to tame the so-called energy transition or the DIY ecology and agriculture uh, or alternative groups of solidarity that uh, distribute food products um, from, from alternative production methods and so on and so forth. And in fact, at a late stage in the project, we have engaged in one of the case studies, um, these communities. But we need, uh, in a future project, we need to enhance this, this aspect because uh, bottom-up uh, engagement, uh, this latent um, possibility of influence cannot be uh, disregarded. And last but not least, we need to also change the ways these research projects are put together. Engaging uh, with the Commission and policy institutions should not be framed on um, an idea of engaging users and beneficiaries. It needs to be grounded on the idea that these institutions have a lot of knowledge. And so we need to frame this as engaging the knowledge holders of these institutions. And with that said, I will just conclude saying that this project is a 
was about making visible that engagement is a place of work. And as a place of work, it has its tools, its infrastructure, and its competences. And we, uh, in a future project, we need to do more experimentation on this. Thank you. I invite you to uh, come to our policy event on the 30th of, of September. The link is here, but you can also, um, if you Google it, you will find uh, the link. Thank you for listening.